everybody, today we are going to be talking about another fantastic game from the Mighty Compass Games. Now, this game is a, um, a redo of a classic called Hansa, and it's something that's kind of outside of Compass's wheelhouse. And that's the thing that really impresses me, is lately there's, they've been putting out a lot of games, Stellar Horizon, not a war game, folks, sci-fi uh, um, sci-fi a realistic sci-fi game that that is absolutely about exploration and and management and 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 venturing out into the stars well this one here is a subject that I really enjoy and that's steampunk okay so it is guilds trying to coal you know trying to trade across all these different cities and you're all on the same airship trying to make the best deals and get the most victory points for the win. Now this game is absolutely beautiful and comes with a mounted board which is on both sides. One is going to be easier to play than the other side and the game is 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 fairly cheap so a lot of people are probably going to go oh my god why do we have a mountain board and that's so inexpensive compared to some of the paper maps that i have the reason is is that compass is does most of their printing here in the united states so all the paper maps and all the games with paper uh paper or or cardboard type of maps are printed here in the united states so uh, they are very about doing this and supporting our local economy. Anything mounted is shipped to China. Now I wanted to make clear that up because a lot of people seem to have or, or not know about this even though we've spoke about this many a time and I like to make sure that each time I come on I explain why there's such a price difference. Is it worth it though? Let me tell you something. No company has games that are as fun as compass games and i have been enjoying so much of their stuff as of, of late i am just completely blown away by the things now what do i think about this game well there's only one thing to do why don't we go down to the table and i tell you about it let's go now here we have traders of the air a very unique steampunk type of field game which uh, is really kind of unique. Now, I have this set up as a two-player game, and I'm not going to explain all the rules. I'm going to give you the quick overview so you get an idea. What you're going to be doing is traveling throughout here. You're all going to be traveling on the same ship, and you're going to be trading and trying to put down guild contracts and gain victory points. Now, you're going to have one of these mats, and it's suggested that you use this side for your, your first couple of games. But then on the other side, you can be a different type of uh, guild and you will be able to use powers. Also on the other side is another map that's even harder. This is the beginning side. So we're just giving you a quick overview of how all this works. You're going to take and put all these um, good markers and these are all goods that are throughout the land and you're gonna put them in this bag and you're gonna shake up this bag and, and then face down you're gonna put them all on this, this uh, uh, onto the different lands. As you can see, there's different numbers and you're going to go numerically. So you always start at Thesbin and then work to two, three, four, five. You always start in New Copenhagen. Now, once you lay all these out, you're going to flip these over. Then the remaining tokens that are in the bag, you are going to separate equally through these five areas. Once these are gone, that's going to start the end game process. And how do these disappear? Well, I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. What you're going to do is at the beginning of your turn, okay, you are going to get income. These are sky dollars. These are very important. Um, but the, 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 what they're going to do is give you certain type of, you be able to move around the board. So to move from here to here, it's going to cost you one sky coin. So you're going to come over here. Now, as you can see, uh, each turn we start with with three tokens um, um, sky uh, sky dollar excuse me uh, you can never have more than three sky dollars at, at the end of a turn but we'll, we'll talk about taxes at the end of the at, at, at the end of this a little bit so once we get here okay as you can see this is a contract I have a contract here now I can decide 
to buy a good. Anytime I buy a good, I can pay one sky dollar. So now I've already spent two sky dollars. I'm going to pick which one. You can only do one action at, at one city. Okay? That's all you can do. You can do as many actions as you want throughout the board, but you're going to have to be able to pay for the movement. I'm going to move this over here, and I want this, this contract right here. Then I'm going to pay another dollar, and I'm going to be able to move over here. All dollars once spent go to the bank, and there's a big pile of them over there. Now here, because I also have a contract here, I'm going to want to sell goods, okay? And by selling, uh, selling goods, I'm going to um, take two of the same color. It has to be two of the same color. And I'm going to flip these over. Once these are flipped over, these are now victory points. But it's a funny thing that happens here. Because you've got to watch uh, your opponent as much as you've got to watch yourself. Because I did that, I lose the contract. So I lose the majority here. So if white had had a uh, con uh, contract there, they would now have the majority, okay? And they would be able to sell. Now, if they had the majority and I wanted to buy something here, and let's, let's just pretend that I didn't do the contract thing first. I wanted to buy this. I would pay, not to the bank, but I would pay that to my opponent because they have the most contracts. If it's a stalemate, then nobody gets it. The bank gets the money, okay? But like I said, I paid that, and now I have two victory points. But there's something else that happens here, which is really unique. Because I turned over the two yellows, if they have a yellow, they lose that yellow. It is removed from the game, and nobody ends up with it. Now, this didn't cost me any money. Now, maybe I just say, well, you know what? I don't want him to get any of these blue. I have one more dollar left. Okay, let's move him here. Boom. Now, that would be pretty much almost the end of my, my actions. I'm done with all my actions. Now, it would be taxes and tolls. If I had more than three of these face up, I would lose those. If I had more than three sky dollars i would lose those the the tokens um the goods they would go to the box and disappear from the game the money if i had more money that would just go right back to the bank so it would be wasted money so you want to try to make sure that you use everything that you possibly can and not leave too much face up where your opponent maybe has the I same idea as you have to sell some of these contracts and get some uh, victory points now, at the very end of the game, everything's going to keep on going. After you buy a contract, okay, you're going to replace from these areas. So say a whole bunch of contracts were, were bought, um, you're going to have to pay us. You don't have to do it, but you're going to be forced to do it if all these goods are gone. If all these goods are gone, you're going to have to pay one sky dollar, and then you're going to have to pl uh, put one of these tokens on each and every space but you're going to do it numerically okay so you would start with two three and then we would go to six and now the board is replenished you don't have to do it but you have to pick the right time to do it because there may be colors that you want so you can gain contracts also you can always um um uh, pay goods Okay, now you can use these goods uh, uh, kind of as money. Say we are up here and I go, geez, you know something? I really would like to put uh, a couple of contracts up there. Well, see the numbers here? They're very important, okay? Because you can only use one of these because it would consider one action. If we had two different ones and we said, and, and say white had one here and we wanted to outdo them and and well let's just say they had two and we want to outdo them and do three well we couldn't pay two tokens you can only pay one token because that is considered one action so i would pay this it would disappear from the game and i would take two of my contracts and put them here now we're even okay he does not own that you have to find a good balance of putting out contracts and pulling back contracts 
and knowing when to do it and how to do it. How to spend the money that you get each turn. You're going to get three each turn. Can you pile up enough money, make the moves that you want, get the contracts out, but also buy the goods that you want and sell the goods. Okay, when you sell the goods, you're going to get victory points and it's going to hurt your opponent because if they have a certain amount or certain color that they're looking to pick up, well, that's going to mess them up because they're going to have to get rid of it and get out of the game. The other thing, key thing here is the movement. Okay, you want to strategically be able to kind of leave your ship in a bad spot that is not going to help your opponent when they go. So all these things go on until all these are placed out onto the board, okay, meaning that they fill this area numerous times. And once the last one is, you get one turn and then the game ends and then the scoring begins. And I'm going to read you very quickly how the scoring ends on this game. Each unsold good, meaning our goods here, that a player owns is one victory point. Not bad. Each sold go good uh, marker a player owns is worth one victory point plus the number of victory points equal to the number sh shown on the marker. So that is three victory points plus one is four. So you could really get a lot of victory points here. Each city where a player has at least one guild contract is worth two victory points. If only one player has any guild contract in a city, this monopoly is worth four victory points. So if, for instance here, if this person at the end of the game is the only one that controls this area, he's going to get four victory points. So again, it becomes a thing that you want to get your markers out there and tie things up. But you also want to try to get the majority. The player who has started to take good markers from the fifth and last spot, supply receives two victory points. Kind of cheap, but you get them. Hey, what the heck? The player who has the most guild contracts in a city on the game board receives vic uh, three victory points. So, for instance, this person has the most here. They're going to get three victory points there. Okay. This one here, if we, he, we had that. It was two versus one. He's going to get three victory points. The player who has at least one guild contract in the most cities on the board receives four victory points. So who would have the most on here? As you can see, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. It would be split. Nobody would get those points. If more than one player is tied for the majority in the last three entries above, all of them received the full amount of points. So they would get um, four each for that. The player who sold the most good markers with number one receives five victory points. So if you sell a whole bunch of these and flip these over and only get one victory point, let's just say this one is sold. If it's on this side and you've got a bunch of these, okay, at one victory point, well, you're going to get a bonus five. But that may not mean as much as getting five for two, okay? So it, 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 it really depends on how you want to play it and so forth and so on. In case of a, uh, the player with the most victory points in the game is the winner and the best trader of the air. So a really unique and, and beautiful, aesthetic, fantastic game from uh, from compass games let's go up and get my final thoughts on this little masterpiece this is a must-have for for anybody that loves a good strategic game this has a it's it's a, it's a very year euro feel game victory points and going around and doing different things but the thing i really enjoy about this and it's so outside of compass's wheelhouse that that it's it's brave for them to go away from what they know best and say you know something we're going to put our money behind it because they do they put their money behind it and go we're going to put this out because this is a good game and we want the public to have a good game and this is a very good game this is a phenomenal game and let me tell you why it's a phenomenal game it's so smart it, it looks like there's not much going on 
but the strategy if you try to take one strategy and go well you know something I'm just gonna buy a ton of go uh, goods I'm gonna flip them over I'm gonna pile up as many victory points as I can well you want to know something you're gonna get eat up by by your opponent because they're gonna say okay yeah you can buy all the goods you want but I'm gonna put all the guilds I can uh, guild contracts out in each of these cities and I'm gonna get a bunch of points there and it, it the game is built where you can't hoard if you hoard um, goods and you hoard sky dollars you're gonna pay dearly at the end of your turn you're not gonna be able to do it and you have to make sure that you spend it and that you apply it and that you do the right things and, and you don't leave an opening for your opponent to go and get a whole bunch of points by laying down a certain amount of ca uh, contracts and, and taking away your majority in certain cities or having a strategic spot where they're able to use every one of their sky dollars and be able to get a whole bunch of actions that are going to be uh, advantageous for them. So it's it's this game that you really have to sit and absorb and it's a battle of of being the best smartest trailer and not being a master of one thing but being very good at a lot of things and that's what makes this game absolutely amazing hats off and a tip of the hat to bill and john once again going out there and 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 taking a chance putting out uh, a, a euro type game from from compass you know they put out their own money to do this but they put it out there because they knew this was a good game this is a very good game and i really highly suggest you guys get it i think it's extremely enjoyable uh we are going to try to play this on air with a, a couple of good friends of mine we're going to play with Gimpy Gamer and uh, Mo, Mo's Game Table. Uh, you're going to see that next week on uh, War and Peace is Live, which finally makes a comeback. It's been a little busy here in Florida. But we want to make sure that we tell you about this game. You can pick this game up at Compass's website right now. It is shipping and it is available now. Go there. You will not be disappointed with this game. I think this is a phenomenal experience. You will not be disappointed. I promise you that. Until next time, it's your old pal Rob for War and Pieces. The end of the game, and you could get this from Miniature Market, my right, Grandpa. <laughs> you could get this from Miniature Market. That's right. Yeah, everything you need. Bye.